So question five, May June twenty twenty two. Um, it is saying that um, g of x is equals to a divided by x plus p uh, plus q, right? And then we are told that uh, the domain um, is an element of any real number except minus 2. And then we're given the x-intercept and the y-intercept. And then 5.1 says show that the equation of g is given by g of x equals to minus 3 divided by x plus 2 uh, plus 1. Okay, on the equation we're given, uh, you have to realize that uh, we have three variables. We have a, p, and q. But then the beauty is that we also have three uh, information, if I can say so, that we are given. We are given the domain, we are given the x-intercept, and then we are given the y-intercept. And like I always say, if you have two variables, you will need two equations. If you have three variables, you will need three equations. And that's exactly what we have here. So, yeah. Uh, to start, uh, the first thing I'm going to start with is to determine uh, p. Uh, because we know that x plus p is equal to zero if x is the uh, vertical asymptote, right? Vertical asymptote. We know that this is true because if it is close to zero then you cannot divide any number by zero then it will be undefined right and that only that only happens at the asymptote so what is the value of x at the asymptote the value of x at the asymptote is minus two uh, so we're gonna say minus two plus p is equals to zero why are we saying it's minus two we're saying it's minus two because our domain is everywhere else except it minus two so our graph cannot touch x equals to minus two so if we solve p from this we're gonna get p equals to two right so now um, we know that uh, g of x is equals to a divided by x plus p uh, p we just say that is two so instead of writing p I'm just going to write 2 plus Q. So now we have uh, determined uh, one variable. We are left with two. And we have used uh, one equation, if I can say so, which is uh, that from the domain, right? So now we have to use the x-intercept and the y-intercept to find A and Q because that's basically what we have left. So we can say x-intercept, um, and then we are told that at the x-intercept uh, is some coordinate k of a variable of a coordinates uh, 1 and 0, right? So uh, the y is 0, so we're going to say 0 equals to a uh, divided by um, the x is 1. So we're going to have 1 plus 2 uh, plus q. Uh, which is going to give us uh, 0 equals to a divided by 3 plus q. Uh, I don't like dealing with fractions. They're just too much. So I'm going to multiply everything by 3 so that I can have uh, a nice equation, <laughs> if so I can say. So we're going to have 0 multiplied by 3, which is 0. And then a divided by 3 multiplied by 3, that is a, and then plus 3q. And then this looks better it's not like a divided by three which is just gonna be messy so i can make a the subject to the formula or i can make 3q but then i'm gonna make a the subject to the formula because if i make 3q the subject of the formula then i'll have to end up dividing by three and i'll get a fraction and i don't want fraction in my life they just complicate things so i'm gonna say uh, a equals to minus 3q and then i can name this equation one because there's nothing else i can do here i can name it equation one and then i can go and use the other point and see if i can solve them simultaneously of course i'm going to be able to solve them simultaneously because i know that this is what these kind of questions are requiring of me so uh the other point we have is the y-intercept uh, which is some point n of coordinate zero for the x and minus one over two for the y so if i substitute it into g of x i'm gonna get um so this is x and then this is y 
So I'm gonna get minus one over two uh, is equals to a divided by, we know the value of p, we see that p is two, so uh, x is zero, right? So because that's the y-intercept, so we're gonna have zero plus the value of p, which is two, and then plus q. So here we're gonna have minus half equals to a divided by two, plus q again i have fractions and i don't want fractions in my life and then i can see that if i multiply by two i can solve that problem so i'm just going to multiply everything by two i'm going to get a uh, minus one uh, which is equals to a uh, plus two q and then uh this is equation uh two right so um uh, i can substitute uh a here and then uh, the only variable I have is minor is Q and then I can solve for Q and then go back and solve for A. So I'm going to uh, sub uh, equation one into equation two. So I'm going to have um, minus one equals to A. We say that is minus three Q and then plus two Q, uh, which is going to say minus one equals to uh, minus q so q equals to one and that's what we're supposed to get because uh, of the equation we're given so now that i've found uh, the value of q i can use uh, this equation one here to find the value of a so i'm gonna say a equals to minus uh, 3q right and then i know that q is uh, 1 so a is equals to minus 3 and that's exactly what uh, we are given so from this I know that g of x is equals to minus 3 divided by x plus 2 plus uh, 1 I've determined q I've determined p I've determined a and I get my six marks and then 5.2 says um determine the range of g uh, g is a hyperbola obviously so we know that for hyperbola uh, in our standard format uh, the range will always be y uh, being the element of r but then y cannot be uh, q right uh, q being one in this instance so y cannot be equals to one right because for y to be equals to one we need x to be equals to minus two and if x is equals to minus two then our equation is undefined because you cannot divide any number by zero because look if we say g equals to let's say we have a and then we divide by minus two plus two uh, plus uh, q which is one right uh, this part here is gonna give us uh, undefined. So for g to be one, we need to say undefined is defined, and that's not correct. So y can never be equals to one because of what we just talked about. And then uh, moving to 5.3, if you wanna know how to conquer the domain, I've done so many videos in um, hyperbolic functions, go on the channel, check them out. And then 5.3 says uh, determine the equation of H, uh, the axis of symmetry of G in the form Y equals to MX plus C, where M is greater than zero. So when we talk about the axis of symmetry of a hyperbolic function, there's only two possible scenarios. Your axis of symmetry will be Y equals to minus X plus C or Y equals to X plus plus c these are the only two possible scenarios so we are told that m is greater than zero so here m is definitely minus one the gradient but here it's one and one is greater than zero so this is the axis of symmetry we are interested in so if you can see um, the only thing we need we really need to determine is the value of c now the question becomes which coordinate do we substitute to determine 
uh, the equation of uh, the, the 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 value of c you substitute uh, where the asymptotes meet so we know that uh, so let's say some point assim uh, asymptote so we know that uh, the vertical which is the x uh, counter intuitively so is uh, minus two and the y is one which is the horizontal asymptote so if we substitute where the asymptotes uh, meet then we can determine the value of c of uh, the axis of symmetry that is because uh, the axis of symmetry is going to pass through where the asymptotes meet. So from here, uh, we can see that uh, y, is, y is 1, so because this is x and then this is y. So we can say 1 equals to x. Um, x is minus 2, so minus 2 plus c. And then we can take, uh, we can add minus 2 to both sides. We're going to get 3. Uh, equals to c. So now we know that uh, the equation of our axis of symmetry of m greater than zero is given by y equals to x uh, plus three. For says write down the coordinates of k, the image of k reflected over h. Uh, usually, the way people want to solve this problem, they want to draw it graphically. Uh, go. Uh, 10 units to the left go 10 units up and all that kind of uh, stuff but then i want to propose a algebraic way we're just going to use equations uh, because i don't like working with fractions and i don't like working graphically i want to solve equations uh, which are very linear straightforward and easy to solve so that's what we're going to do here so um we know that we have some um some axis of symmetry that is positive so it's going up right and then we have our point uh, k and then uh, we're supposed to determine k with that notation on top okay so we're just gonna call this k here um k subscribe because you all need to subscribe to the channel so <laughs> let's call it subscribe so um we have k subscribe and k k subscribe in the reflection of k uh, over our axis of symmetry right but then if uh, we draw a line here from k subscribe to k and we determine the equation of uh, this line then we can uh, find k subscribe using the uh, midpoint formula or theorem so to say so how do we determine uh, the equation of this uh, line uh, that is touching k subscribing k uh, because this line cuts perpendicularly uh, to our axis of symmetry we know that uh, the equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals to x uh, plus 3 right so m is equals to 1 so to find the gradient of this line we're going to say uh, 1 multiplied by the gradient of our uh, y subscribe equals to minus 1 right because they are perpendicular so uh, the gradient of our uh, line y subscribe will be equals to uh, minus 1 divided by 1 which is just minus 1 so we know that uh, our equation for y subscribe is uh, y subscribe equals to uh, minus x plus c now how can we determine c we know the coordinates of k to be 1 and 0 right so we can say uh, 0 is equals to minus 1 plus c so c is equals to 1 so our equation for y uh, subscribe will be equals to minus x uh, plus 1 so now what we're gonna do we're gonna equate y subscribe and y uh, the axis of symmetry right uh, which is also h of x if we equate the two uh, then we're gonna find where they touch and where they touch is the midpoint between k and k subscribe so that will be minus x plus one uh, which is equals to x plus three um, so minus two x is equals to 2 so x is equals to uh, minus 1 right so these uh, two lines they touch at x equals to minus 1 uh, but what is the y value uh, the y value will be equals to we take any between these two equations to find the y value right so let's take x plus 3 we're gonna get uh, minus 1 uh, plus 3 which is equals to 2 so 
um, the midpoint of why subscribe will be uh, so let's say a midpoint will be uh, minus one and two so now we can find uh, the coordinates of k uh, using uh, the midpoint so we're gonna say um, minus one is equals to x of k uh, plus x of uh, k subscribe divided by two if we cross multiply we're gonna get minus two is equals to x uh, k x of k is one right plus x of k subscribe so x of k subscribe is equals to minus three right so we're gonna say uh, y of midpoint uh, which is uh, two is equals to y of uh, k subscribe plus y of k divided by 2 and then we're going to cross multiply so we're going to get 4 equals to y of k subscribe plus y of k which is 0 so y of k subscribe equals to uh, 4 so the value of uh, the coordinates of k subscribe will there be 4 will there be uh, minus 3 and 4 whoa that's a lot and you probably forgotten uh, the steps you have to follow so step one uh, find um, y perpendicular right uh, the equation of y perpendicular uh, y perpendicular uh, being perpendicular to uh, the equation of the reflection right so let's say equation of uh, reflection you know of the line of the reflection and then after you find that y perpendicular uh, you're gonna use the point that lie on y perpendicular to find c and then you can find the equation after you do that then equate uh, y and y perpendicular to find uh, the midpoint right and after you've determined the midpoint you can then use uh, the formula for the uh, mid point to find uh, the point of uh, reflection like we just did.